Well, those words were made famous by Robin Williams in the movie of the same name. A great movie. And speaking of great, well, I just received this book not too long ago, U.S. Artillery in Vietnam, as published from AK Interactive. What a hefty book, full of wonderful photographs. Now, this isn't going to be a book review video. This will be a build video, building a model here. But if you would like to see inside this book, a review of the book, a page-by-page -page analysis, looking at all the pictures, talking about what's inside the book, I did go through it cover to cover, and that video is posted on my Patreon page. Not only does the book go into the artillery pieces of the Vietnam War, but it also goes into a lot of the ancillary support units, and one of those happens to be the M42 Duster. I have always enjoyed the Duster. It's a great little tank. I enjoy making smaller equipment, smaller tanks and vehicles, but lethal with those twin 40 millimeter cannons. Initially, the Duster was designed as an anti-aircraft weapon, but it really came into its own as a ground support weapon during the Vietnam War, adding lethal support to the artillery fire bases. While I was flipping through all these pages and doing these reviews, it just dawned on me. It's like, hey, guess what, Rick? You know what? With all these videos that we've been working on together, all these different projects, I have yet to do a Vietnam subject. And so now with the, all the enthusiasm, all of the references handy at my fingertips, yep, this is our time to start working on a Vietnam project here for the Propaganda Channel. And what better subject, what better vehicle than the M42 Duster? As I said, it really has a, I have a soft spot for it. And so we'll take this from beginning to end. We'll open the box, and at the very end, we'll complete the project all the way through. So buckle up, guys. We have another busy episode to look forward to. Well, let's crack open the box and see what we have here. Well, when it comes to the duster, there are a couple of different manufactured versions on the market at present. Tamaya makes a nice example. I've chosen to use the AFV version here. I think it's a great looking kit, at least from the box. I did a little bit of review, you know, reading and things like that. Seemed to have everything in it that I was going to need. This is going to be basically an out of the box type of a build. Nothing, no aftermarket here at all. Matter of fact, we're going to kind of postpone perhaps doing a base for this one just because, well, I haven't quite the time and haven't figured out what I want to do yet. But a quick flip through the pages here looks like a pretty straightforward build at least in terms of the instructions the plastic comes in a nice dark basically olive green color should have no surprises just looking through the plastic everything looks of nice detail one of the nice features one of the reasons I chose to work on the AFV kit it does come with metal barrels for those twin 40s so they are right tucked away right there so I'm looking forward to getting those installed as well before I get too busy with this project, just a quick reminder, if you like this channel, please hit that like and subscribe. And if you would like extra content, such as a review of that U.S. Artillery and Vietnam book review, that is available on my Patreon channel. So here we go. So construction really follows a, the typical path. You start with the hole. Everything is very, very quick and easy with, the, with this part of it. The lower hole goes together just beautifully. The tabs are nicely placed. Everything's nice and secure. The fit is great. The, the detail level is wonderful. This is truly a very nice kit to be working on. The theme basically continues along the same path here, so we're just kind of building our way up the model. So next comes the, the fenders and then all the various stowage lockers and ancillary tools and such that are placed on the lockers. The fit still, once again, is absolutely wonderful here. Everything just slots into place. At this point, now the model gets a little more complicated here in just a few minutes. We'll get there in just a second. But at this point, everything just comes together with ease. And this is, I'm thinking to myself at this point, well, this is going to be just a one-day build here. But like I said, things get a little bit uh, tighter and trickier here as we move on to the gun platform. Now, speaking of that gun platform, <laughs> here we go. What we'll notice here is that all the parts are very, very small all of a sudden, and the spaces that we're gluing them into are also very small and tight. And I will say, and I'm not really reviewing the kit per se, but uh, the instructions could be a little, little clearer, a little better laid out in certain areas. It's a lot of test fitting and kind of assumptions and guessing on certain items where they might go. But in the end, it, it all fits together, so just take your time through this part of it. Adding those metal barrels is kind of like the final step. They're just kind of sitting in place right now. But there we have it. We have our M42 Duster spinning around as it should be here in all its glory. All in all, this took about, uh, I think, three days to put together here. That turret, like I said, <laughs> that slowed me down by quite a bit. But I'm really pleased with the results. Now, let's get on to some painting. 
A special thank you to all my amazing Patreon members for your incredible support. Your contributions help me continue to create content for this channel. If you're not already a member, I invite you to join our Patreon community. As a member, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and more. I hope you'll consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you very much. So just a bit of a change up here. Now, if you've been following any of my videos for, yeah, it's been about two years now, uh, you'll notice, you'll know that I've been using AK Real Colors. I love those, I still do. But I didn't have the right color, the Vietnam type color that I wanted in my collection. So I have my AK Gen 3s and I'm gonna paint those on. And no problem painting those on as well. Just use the dedicated thinner. And my ratio of thinning is about 50-50 with the thinner. and. The coverage is absolutely fantastic. What I'm looking for here, at least to my eye, and a lot of those photographs and Vietnam era photographs, the vehicles, the US vehicles tended to be very, very dark in their color, almost like a blue-green sort of a shade. So I wanted to at least start out with my base colors in that realm, that really dark realm, and I'll start bringing it out a little bit lighter later on with the weathering. Okay, now we have our base colors on, and now it's time for weathering. And this is much more familiar territory. Of course, we're going to be using the oil paints to weather, kind of falling back on my usual here. I'm looking forward to this, uh, the weathering part, because there's a couple of challenges and little unique nuances here that I'm going to try to try to pick out here. The first being is that the base color is very, very dark. That was on purpose. And the second kind of interesting thing that we're going to be doing here is that we've got that Vietnam earth color that kind of reddish brown clay sort of color that we're going to be playing with. I think between the dark color of the base and those reddish brown colors that we can have a lot of fun. And then who says US vehicles have to be boring green because the duster specifically has these little brass fittings and little steel fittings especially around the gun so we can add these little bright pops of color here. Now let's talk about bad habits of modelers, <laughs> shall we? Now, um, some of us, you know, we have a stash that's way too big. Some of us start a lot of models, but we never finish them. My bad habit, to be quite honest, is when I contemplate, when I start a project, I'm always thinking I should add more to it. Add some photo etch or add some unique decals or whatever the case may be. Do some scratch building. Um, I've tried to resist it on this project. And what was really nice about that approach is as I started to reference the artillery in Vietnam book with the provided markings within the kit, I was able to find the references between the book and the markings supplied in the kit. So that's kind of fun, just knowing that you know, I really didn't need to go out and search for something unique because I had some references already in the book. Now we're on to the weathering, and this is the oil paint weathering, of course. So recap on how this works how the the process works i start with a light color and then we'll go to darker colors in this case we have that vietnam earth tone that we were, we're going to get to eventually but i'm going to lay a foundation and the foundation here is dust that's the color dust from 502 aptalone start adding those into places around the crevices around panel lines into the recesses things like that now just take your time here slowly but surely and i'm going to start just taking this light color and start establishing these various areas of dirt and grime and dust. Now we'll add the color later, like I said, the distinctive Vietnam color. Right now we're just establishing, uh, I guess you would, the foundation layers, the color fields themselves. The colors are nearly dry. They've been sitting on this palette. The linseed oil has kind of soaked itself out, leached out. Tap on some color with the brush and then come back with a clean brush, a basically dry brush, soft round brush and just tap it in and blend it into the surface. And I just repeat this process over and over, working my way around the vehicle, just taking time to, how does it look? Where can I add some more? Where should I kind of have some restraint? And that's kind of part of it too, is look at the vehicle as a whole. You don't want it to be symmetric, symmetrical, symmetric. You know, you want some places where there's more dirt, some places that's a little bit more clean. You want to show where the crew may have come and gone and wiped off some of the dirt or where maybe somebody spilled and now there's a big stain. So all that starts to come into consideration even at this early stage. 
one of the questions that I get often, especially with the working with the oils, is like, it, they take so long to dry. Well, you're almost watching this in real time. So I have applied those dust colors, and now I'm coming back in with that secondary color. This will be the more reddish brown color. Just adding those into a little bit more smaller space or a narrower field within those dust tones. I'm not waiting for the first layer to necessarily dry. The idea of adding the colors after they've been sitting on the cardboard palette, they're pretty dry to start off with. I'm not adding a lot of thinner to any of these mixes as I'm working on to them. And then the stippling with another dry brush basically dries out all the paint. So you can just keep continuing to work and add layers upon layers and blend them all together. Once you get started, you can work as quickly or as slowly as you just you want to or are able to. So you can work for an hour a night, put it away for the evening, come back to it the next day or even the next week. What I do with my paints, my oil paints, that little cardboard, I'll put those into an airtight container and I stick those in the freezer. And the next time that I start working, whether that be the next morning or a week later, they're still fresh. So I can just bring them out and I can continue working. I have the same colors, they're ready to go and I continue on with my painting and weathering. As I'm working on the, the gun platform here, you recall there's these little shiny spots, the brass and the steel, and I've already painted those out with AK Gen 3 metallics, but I want just a little more polish, a little more gleam to them, if you will, a little shine. So I have these AK True Metal colors, I have brass and I have steel. Just add some of that as kind of a wax paste and they kind of polish back and I really give a nice metallic appearance. I'm finally getting to the end of the gun platform here, the turret, and one of the last steps, and I purposely left this to the very end, is the metal barrels. Even though they're primed nicely and I'm painting them nicely, there's always that risk of, you know, just a little scratch or something, Just, and I don't want to have to repaint them a thousand different times. So I leave those to the very, very end, and then we'll just touch a super glue, and we'll install those. And now we're really getting close to the end of this project, or maybe not. This is truly one of those out-of-the-box projects, including the vinyl or rubber band tracks. I still have uh, hesitancies and mixed feelings about these, but we're going to make them work. So what I've done so far is Mr. Surfacer 1200 primer over everything, another layer of black, and now I'm going to give it a layer of extreme metal steel. And this will allow me to, I hope, polish back certain areas to expose some of the metallic effect underneath. The next step is to paint out all those little rubber track pads, yep, all 13 billion of them using just basically rubber black from the AK Gen 3 selection. And then a few washes of kind of a black brown color just to start to dull down some of these colors and add a little bit of definition, allowing this very thinned wash just to kind of seep down into a lot of those cracks and crevices. And then finally, as a final touch, 
just a small amount of pigment here. This is rubble dust, a color that's very close to the oil color paints that I was using earlier. Just adds some color and grittiness to some of these lower hole areas. Again, this is a very light application. I'm applying them dry. Just get a dusty tone and a lot of this will actually get wiped off with a soft brush. I'm not trying to add mud or anything like that. Just a little bit of dust, a little bit of discoloration and I think the pigments have done that well. And so that brings us to the end of this project. I'm ready to close the book here and let's take a look at some final photographs. So I get asked quite often, you know, where, Rick, where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get your ideas for all your projects? Well, you just saw it happen with this project. I received the book and that book inspired me. I was able to flip through the pages, let my imagination run wild. You know, the duster, as I mentioned, was a kit or at least a vehicle that I've always been intrigued with. I love the design of it. I just think it looks cool. And after seeing the photographs in the book and reading the narratives, I thought this is this is it this is how and so that's how my inspiration comes from comes from all different places but in this case it really came from this book if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy these projects please hit that like and subscribe if you do want to see more content so like i said i have a review of that book on the patreon i also make exclusive videos for patreon members i hope to see you there until the next time everybody take care and of course happy modeling